Uh, good evening. This tutorial will assist anyone who's having difficulty with any of the problems from yesterday's assignment, uh, which will be uh, assignments 2.3 and 2.4 in the gradebook. Um, I'm just going to cover problems from 2.4 because the problems from 2.3 are the same type, and this will help you with those as well. So whenever you solve problems in geometry, there are two things that you want to make sure you always do. The first is you want to be sure to read all of the instructions and take note of any and all information that's given to you in the problem. When doing this, you want to get in the habit of asking yourself, what is this problem asking me exactly? And then you, you then want to be sure that you're answering that question. The second thing you want to be sure to do is to draw a diagram if it is not already drawn for you and then label it accordingly. So all of these problems involve two parallel lines that are inter intersected by a transversal. An important concept to be sure to understand is that when two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, eight angles are formed and each angle has a relationship with every other. So if you are given the measure of just one of these eight angles, you should be able to determine the measures of all seven of the others. Unless the transversal is perpendicular to the parallel lines, which would look something like this, then uh, four acute angles um, will be formed that are all going to be congruent to each other, and four obtuse angles are going to be formed that will all be congruent to each other. Um, so, for example, if we have, let's say we're, we've got this, and so that means that they're parallel, and let's say that this angle right here is 30 degrees. Okay, so if you notice, there's going to be four acute angles, this one, this one, this one, and that one. Okay, so they're all going to be 30. Okay, so you can just go ahead and write them in. And then we've got four obtuse angles. And remember, any acute angle plus an obtuse angle is going to equal 180. So we would subtract 30 from 180, and we'll get 150. So you would just fill in accordingly. Okay, and that's what you're going to do for problems one and two here. Um, <clears throat> but for problem one, as you see, there's actually going to be three parallel lines. So uh, there's going to be 12 angles formed, and so you're going to be given one angle. So you're going to be given angle five, and um, you can. it's kind of hard to tell, but there's going to be six acute and six obtuse. And what I would do with this one is I would use the dot method with this one and just mark, mark them like that. So you're going to mark all these angles. So all these are going to be congruent. So you see they go in a pattern like that. So all the ones with a dot are congruent to each other. All the ones that do not have a, a dot are going to be congruent to each other. And then if you take any one with a dot and add it to any one that does not have a dot, they're always going to add up to 180. So you'll use this 82 right there for 5 to figure out all the other ones. Okay. So for this one right here, notice we've got two parallel lines here, but then we've got two transversals. So it's the same concept, but each transversal, notice that they're kind of they're going in different directions, is going to create eight angles that are going to have a relationship to each other. So these eight up here are all related, and then these eight down here are all related. What I would do, if you're having issues seeing this, is I would cover up one of the transversals, and I would solve, I would just work these first. So it says here that 10 is 102, so we would make this 102. And then so 10 will be congruent to 12, will be congruent to 2, will be congruent to 4. So 4, 2, 12, and 10 will all be the same. And then to figure out the other ones, 11, 9, 3, and 1, those will all be the same. We take 180 minus 102 to get those. Again, mark them with dots if you want to. Um, or just remember that all the acute are congruent, all the obtuse are congruent. Okay, so you do the same thing here. Okay, so it says, what does it say? Angle 7 is 38 degrees. So then we know that all of the acute are congruent. So 5 is congruent to 7, to 13, to 15. You see the pattern? Bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left. Okay. And then all of these obtuse angles will be congruent to each other. And if you take any one of the obtuse and add it to any one of the acute, they add up to 180. Okay. Um, all right, so with this one here, what you're going to need to do, anytime you have a problem like this, so we've got the two parallel lines here, and this would be the transversal. There's really three transversals. You always want to extend these lines right here. We haven't done a problem like this in class, um, but you'll definitely see this on a test, likely in the FSA. So you'll want to just extend this line like that. Sorry, I know you can't really see it. Okay, so like that. All right, so now, if you look and see this, 
we can see some of these relationships. So imagine that's the line right there. So 9 will be congruent to 2. 3 will be congruent to 8. Okay. Or I apologize. 9 will be congruent to 2. And then... All right, three is not congruent to eight. I apologize. Nine is congruent is congruent to two because see they're on the same transversal. Okay, three and eight are not on the same transversal because eight is formed by this has to do with this line right there. Okay, so go ahead and mark maybe three, not three. Again, go ahead and mark two and nine as congruent. Okay. And then other things that you can figure out, you know that 4 and 5 are going to, because it's a straight line, are going to add up to 180. Okay. And then go ahead and write in the angles that you're given. So 41 is going to be here, so we know 41 would be 2. So you would just write in 41 there for 2. And so we know 9 is also going to be 41. And then it says 5 is 94. Okay. So the way we would get 4 is we do 180 minus 94, and that's what, 86? Okay, so 4 would be 86. And then, let's see, we're also given 10 as 109. Okay. Now we can figure out, <clears throat> we can figure out angle 8 because we have a straight line right here. And remember when we, I'm just going to draw a little, remember when we have a straight line and, and it's intersected. These two angles are going to add up to 180. Well, if it's intersected by multiple lines, so it's still the same thing. That plus that plus that's going to be 180. So here, that's what we're doing here. So angle 8 plus angle 9 plus angle 10 are going to equal 180. So to get angle 8, we'll subtract the, add these two together and, sub, and um, subtract the total from 180. So 41 and 109 is going to be 150. And if we subtract that from 180, it's going to be 30. So angle 8 is going to be 30. Okay, so that'll give you angle 8. And one other thing that you we haven't really gone over um, that will help you solve this problem is that <clears throat> the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So we can figure out angle 7. So we do the same thing, 41 plus 30 is 71, subtract that from 180. So 180 minus 71 is gonna give us 109, so that would be 109 there. Okay, and then you can figure out angle six because those are gonna add up to 180. And you can also figure out angle three the same way. So you would add 86 and 41 together and subtract that from 180. We'll do this again in class because I know everybody's probably not going to see this, um, but I wanted to get you started on that one. Um, all right, so then for the rest of the problems, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, all the way down, um, these, are, these all have multiple, the ones on the back have multiple um, variables. So what you want to do for four and five is you're just going to determine the relationship between these. As you see, they're both obtuse. So whenever they're the same uh, type of angle, we set them up equal to each other. So 10x minus 23 equals 137. Let me solve for x. Here, you know, it's kind of hard to see, but these are going to be different um, because they're going to be same side interior angles. So these are going to add up to 180 because if we put dots on them like this, okay, dot, no dot. So that means they're going to be supplementary. So we do 96 plus 6x or minus 30, sorry, equals 180. And we just solve for x, okay. Um, and then I want you to state the relationship, whether they're uh, same side interior angles, alternate interior, or corresponding. And then back here, what you're going to do is you've got multiple variables here, x, x, y. So you got that for all of these, I believe, or like that. And so what you would need to do whenever there's more than one variable is solve for the one that has two variables. So, or one that's present twice. So x and x. So we're going to solve for x first. So this is going to be obtuse and that's going to be acute. So remember if they're different, and remember, so that's going to be 8x minus 10 plus 18x minus 44 equals 180. 
Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x, and I'm going to do this really quickly. So we get 26x minus 54 equals 180. Okay, and then we're going to add 54 to both sides. So 234. And then I think that's going to be 9. Okay, so x is going to be 9. And then we take this 9 and we plug it back into either one of these. And we're going to use that to solve for this. Okay, so um, it doesn't matter which one you plug it in. I would always plug it into the one that's going to be congruent. So you see how these are congruent? Okay, so you take the 9, put it in here for this 18. I apologize about my dogs. Okay, so 9 times 8, 72. And that's going to be 162 minus 44 equals 118. Okay, so you, then you're going to use this 118 right here to solve for this. And those are congruent, so we'll have 13y minus 38 equals 118. And now we solve for y. So you got 13y, add 38 to the 118, you get what, 156. And then when we divide 156 by 13, that's what, 13, what, 12? Okay. And so we get 9 and 12. Okay, and so you'll do the same thing there, there, there. Remember, if you get confused, just put dots there. Acute, 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 acute. Okay, so you solve for x first. Those both ha don't have dots, so they're going to be congruent. So that equals that to solve for x. Same thing here, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so we're going to solve for those. So no dot, dot. So we would do this plus this equals 180. Here, um, this is going to be the same thing. They're both parallel. So you kind of just imagine this goes here. So this is going to be, since they're both parallel, it's going to be just like this. All right, and so then this one has a dot. That one has a dot, so you'll set them equal to each other, solve for x. And then you're going to plug it back in, doesn't matter which one, uh, because these are going to be different. And then once you plug x back in, you'll get this value. And you, so you're going to do this plus that equals 180. Okay. For 10 and 11, I want you guys to see if you can figure these out on your own. Um, just remember, straight line will be 180, so you can... Um, so this will be congruent to this angle right here there okay um you know this one you can figure out from there um just just play around with it see if you can figure it out do the same thing here i won't count off if you don't get these um, but i'll give you some extra points if you're able to figure them out all right i'll see you in the morning